Welcome back to Pop Culture Conspiracy. I'm your host, T. How are y'all doing today? In this video, I'm going to be talking about Glorilla and JT as it pertains to musical success, artistic abilities, public opinion, and likability politics. Before I hop in, please like, share, and subscribe. Let's talk in the comments and please turn on your notifications. All right, you guys. So I made a TikTok the other day where I was talking about how I've noticed the hype around uh, JT's mixtape, City Cinderella, has significantly gone down since its release. And I was not expecting people to eat JT up in the comments the way that they did. I'm gonna go ahead and play that TikTok video now. Is this a safe space? Can we talk about JT's City Cinderella from an objective perspective now that the hype has died down? Because I noticed y'all are no longer using these songs as sounds in y'all TikTok videos. Also, I don't see any more press coverage of her tour. Now, I assume her tour is over because I don't think somebody with one solo mixtape and that hasn't risen to international success, you know, is going to be on tour for well over a year. But what I can say is I told you guys in a music review that I did on YouTube about this project. I told you guys that I thought it was just okay. I told you guys that I thought she had a lot of developing to do because I'm not saying that JT isn't talented, but what I'm saying is there are some new girls out there that can still outrap her. I feel like Megan and Lotto can rap better than JT and y'all can argue with me in the comments. It is what it is. But I think JT again still has, again, to develop her skills. Now, what I want to know is why didn't she get more push as a solo artist in the group city girls i know some of it could be maybe she wasn't like ready to be solo maybe she was like scared to rap by herself but i just find it strange how young miami was the one you know doing a lot of like solo features when young miami can't rap and now she's like what shelved and dropped but JT, the one who actually has skills, you know, wasn't being pushed to like go feature on more people's songs. And she should have, because even if she really wasn't ready to be completely solo, her label should have been telling her, no, like you need to um, go pick up some some features on your own, especially if you're really serious about music. Like if you ever want to be solo, you need to establish yourself through features and at least start laying a foundation. There was no reason why Young Miami was, again, doing more solo features than JT. So that was just strange. But I don't know. I know a lot of you guys like this project. I think you guys liked it because you like JT and you want to see her win. And I I think JT is decent. You know, I kind of am indifferent towards her. But um, I do want to see her make more projects because, again, I think she's got potential. But I, again, I wasn't under the spell of overhyping City Cinderella. I think, again, it was just an okay project. And it's sad to see people like um Glorilla with her manufactured success and a lot of her label push you know again get more um get more chart success than JT and I think JT definitely has more skills than Glorilla I think Glorilla is a gimmick so let's talk in the comments what y'all think so do y'all agree with the comments because again I wasn't expecting all that. You know, do you think people are justified in their opinions or do you think people just don't like JT? And that's why I wanted to bring up the conversation of public opinion and likability politics because politics and perception is really important in the music industry. I think JT has a couple things working against her. I think people already think that she's a mean person, that she's, you know, nasty, shady, again, a mean girl. It's also harder on her because when you're a dark-skinned woman, people kind of already perceive you as being mean, you know, nasty, bad attitude. It doesn't help it that she's, you know, from Miami. People think that she's hood and ghetto. Like, people think so many nasty things about her. And you know, again, to an extent, JT is hood and ghetto, but that doesn't mean that she's a bad person. That doesn't mean that she's always mean and nasty. I do think people provoke JT. I do think that people, you know, come for her and think that they can just say anything to her and that she's supposed to just take it. 
But I do think, um, on the other hand, JT still has personal growth that she's got to do. And she still has to work on her temper and her reactions and stuff like that. And again, JT is human and she comes from a rough upbringing in a rough environment. So unlearning some of her behavior and some of her trauma, you know, and healing from that is going to take time. And you can't, um, you know, mess with somebody and provoke somebody and try to dictate, you know, how they react. So I see it from both um, perspectives. I don't think JT is 100% innocent, but I think that people do come for her. But again, when you're dark skinned, people definitely try to, you know, masculinize you and they definitely try to, you know, push your buttons and put you in a box and marginalize you in any way possible. And again, if you react to something versus somebody like Lada where I spice reacting to something, the dark skinned person is going to really get the brunt of the pushback as to, oh, why did you react like that? It's so easy to say somebody who's dark skin is overreacting, whereas again, somebody who's light skin is just seen as, you know, oh, she's just clapping back. You know, you just, that's what you get. You shouldn't have came for her. So I think people just don't extend the same type of grace to JT that they would somebody of a lighter skin tone, just for real. I think colorism is real and it still runs rampant within the black community, sadly, more than anywhere else. That being said, I wanted to really bring that up because I think that has a lot to do with why some people are celebrating um, Glorilla's success over JT. I think that situation that happened a couple months back where JT and Glorilla were kind of going back and forth on Twitter. First of all, I've always believed that that was orchestrated beef. I think Glorilla was about to fall off and her label needed to kick up manufactured drama. For real, this is why this channel is called Pop Culture Conspiracy because I'm here to really bring a different perspective. I'm here to look past the curtain and reveal that it's a lot more tricks and giggles and a lot more bullshit, you know, to the music industry and to the entertainment business period than people would like to tell you on any other platform. I think Glorilla needed a boost and I think um, they used JT to give it to her. I think again, JT was on a roll. I think she was doing shows at clubs and it was the perfect time, especially while everybody else, cause notice the timing, them two were going back and forth at a time where it seemed like the whole hip hop community was going back and forth and was beefing and was arguing and was taking it to the streets, you know, taking it to the internet. And then these two magically go back and forth on Twitter of all platforms where everybody could see. Even when, again, if they really had a problem, they could have, you know, texted each other or met up or anything like that. So them taking it to Twitter kind of let me know this is fake beef. You know, this is orchestrated. So I don't believe that them two ever really had a problem. Again, I think JT was making moves and I think Glorilla needed to kick up issues with her. Um, for clout, to be honest with you, I really, really do because, like I've told you guys in multiple other videos, I think Glorilla is a gimmick, and I mentioned that in the TikTok video. But I do have more long form videos on this channel where I predicted that um, Glorilla wouldn't be here long, and I'm surprised that she's still here now. And I think a lot of it is because, again, Glorilla is playing the game, I think she is putting in her work, I think she is chosen. You know, some of these people are bloodline, they're industry plants. And they push the agenda, their industry puppets, and so the industry allows them to stick around because the industry is using them to, again, push propaganda, push agendas, and everything else. So I think Glorilla's success, to a major extent, is orchestrated and... You know, a lot of her stuff isn't authentic. I think Glorilla has had a big industry push, again, from other artists too, like, again, Rihanna and, you know, Paul Wall and, of course, of course um, a couple other people just make it seem like they just love Glorilla so much. And it's the same thing with Sexy Red. You know, here comes LeBron and Savannah talking about, oh, yeah, we listen to Sexy Red. I don't think that they really listen to Sexy Red. I just think that they're all a part of a certain clique and... Part of being in that clique is you get a manufactured push. So again, I think um, a lot of Glorilla shit is just not authentic. And that whole beef situation was, again, for clout. 
but people didn't like the way um, JT came at her. And I think it's because, again, people perceive it kind of like Nicki Minaj too. People think, oh, you always in some mess. It must be you. You know, you always going back and forth with somebody. It must be you. And so now that Glorilla appears to be thriving and it appears that she is, um, you know, more mainstream than JT or having more mainstream success, Dan JT, I think some people are reveling in that because they like her more than JT, even though I think they're both not that talented. And that's what I'm really here to talk about, because I don't really care for either artist, to be honest with you. Um, I talked to you guys before. I don't like Glorilla's music. I don't really like her image. I don't like her name. <laughs> I think it's obvious that she's a puppet and I'm not really into what she's selling. I'm not buying what she's selling. She could keep it. And when it comes to JT, I feel like I'm indifferent to JT. And that's not a good space to be in when somebody doesn't like you or dislike you because then they just completely don't care. And that's how you fall into that, you know, dark hole of irrelevancy. When it comes to JT, I think I used to like her more in the past. And some people said that her and Young Miami should have stayed a group because she kind of needed Young Miami, you know, energy to like go back and forth with on records. And I just don't know about that. I think um, I could agree with that to some extent because I think JT's solo project, City Cinderella, really shows that she has a lot of artistic development to do. Um, I did think that JT was more talented than this. And I told you guys in the review, I didn't really like the project. I listened to it twice so that I could try to give you the best review that I could. It was painful to listen to. And I don't want to say painful. I want to say it just was uninteresting. It wasn't fun to listen to. I Spice was painful to listen to. And I did a review on Y2K as well. But when it came to City Cinderella, I was waiting for it to be over. And that's not good. A lot of the songs were not interesting. A lot of the project just wasn't that good. And people agree with my sentiments. You know, a lot of people were like, we didn't even know it had hype. Again, I showed you some comments. So people had um, quite some quite quite some critiques for this project. And again, it really wasn't that good. Um, I think again, the real issue with JT and a lot of new female rappers is they just don't understand that rap is an art. I don't think they understand that. I don't think they understand the fundamentals of the English language. They don't understand the fundamentals of a rhyme scheme. They don't understand rhythm. They don't understand syllables. They just don't understand, again, the foundations of language as a whole and creative writing and poetry. And that shows when it's time for them to make music. Um, Megan Thee Stallion Lotto, excuse me, Megan Thee Stallion Ice Spice and JT all struggle with switching flows. I don't think Lotto has that problem. I think Lotto has a likability problem and that's what's hurting her career. But when it comes to, that's why likability matters. Same thing with Megan. I think Megan can't switch flow and I think Megan is not likable. So that has deeply hurt her record sales. But when it comes to, again, JT, I think JT has all issues into one. I think she's not likable. I think she really can't rap that good. And I think, again, she struggles with switching flows. You know, something that I noticed, again, when listening to City Cinderella is JT and Young Miami both struggle with writing a beat. And I know that Megan can't switch flow very well, but she can write a beat. Glorilla is not talented in my opinion, but she can still write a beat better than JT. The beat writing situation is a big problem. If you can't write a beat, you're not gonna last long. And I think again, Glorilla has music that sounds better. It's not about being talented because if we're gonna really talk about it, Rihanna can't sing. She really can't dance outside of like dutty whining and twerking. But Rihanna is likable and Rihanna can make hits, period. You can't argue with that. She has an untouched or an unmatched discography. And so it's not all about if you can sing. SZA can't sing, you know, but people have to like your music. You have to make music that people want to listen to. You have to make music that sounds good. It's not about if you can sing. Beyonce can sing 
but Rihanna has better sounding music than the majority of Beyonce's discography. That's just my opinion on that. I have a whole video critiquing Beyonce's discography. But um, again, record sales don't lie. And there's a reason why people are begging Rihanna to make another album and we're kind of like sick of Beyonce because again, does it sound good? Can we jam to it? Can we feel it? Can we relate to it? Does it resonate? And if you struggle with those things, then you're not going to last. Eventually the smoke and mirrors, the gimmicks, the glamour magic will all wear off. And that's what's happening again to a lot of rap artists because the music really isn't good. You know, that's what's happening to Cardi B. They're falling off. They can't make any music. They're shelved and the label isn't pumping money into them. Or if the label is pumping money into them, then that's the only thing that's keeping them afloat is, again, manufactured success and label push because the, the music or the this record sales and the hype is not authentic. And so, you know, I think I just summed up the music industry all together right there. But again, Glorilla can still make a better sounding bop than JT. Um, I think when it comes down to, again, who sounds better, Glorilla has a very thick accent and that's okay. I don't have an issue with the Memphis accent at all. I'm from a city where people have very thick accents. I just didn't grow up there. And so I didn't inherit that accent. And so I don't have an issue with accents. I like accents. They're no problem for me. Um, my, I say that to say JT has a very thick accent too, but JT just doesn't understand, again, um, the fundamentals of making music. She really needs to learn, again, rhyme scheme, and um, in rhythm so she can stop struggling with the beat and and really get her her craft together. Glorilla, I feel like can ride a beat. Um, again, I don't really like her voice. I'm not interested in her content. I think that's what's really the disconnect for me. I think I don't like Glorilla's um, the, her, the, the content that she's talking about is very ABC rap. It's very remedial. It's very repetitive. It's nothing that I haven't heard before. It's very unoriginal. It's not very creative. And again, she doesn't really help herself out by continuously sampling music, especially when um, she just sampled this Boosie Wipe Me Down. It just continues to prove these people are not that creative and not that original. And again, you've already sampled a song that's, you know, a hit in our community that song is a cultural is a cultural classic kind of like back that ass up you know wipe me down could get any party jumping so when you again when you follow the the cadence of that song you follow the flow of that song and you follow and you get that beat you're not really doing anything new you're 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 kind of guaranteeing yourself you know, play and, and spend and some sort of level of success because you're, you know, completely ripping the blueprint of a song that's already been successful. And that's a marker that you're just not that talented. You guys can like Glorilla and that's fine, but will she really um, be here long? Not off of, again, legitimate sales and success. I just don't see that. Let me know if you think different in the comments. So when it comes to these girls, you know, again, I think Glorilla has won the war, long story short. I don't think JT can recover from City Cinderella. I don't. Um, if she does manage to recover, she's going to truly have to rebrand her sound. And I told you guys that in my review, I said she needs to learn how to switch flow and she needs to switch genre. She needs to switch content too. Like we can't all be rapping about the same couple topics, you know, again, in order to last in this game, you have to be multifaceted. And that's something that Kanye, that's something that Nicki Minaj, that's something that Drake um, can do well, even Doja Cat. And I think, again, Doja Cat takes a lot of inspiration from Nicki Minaj, but those are all artists who, again, have sold a lot of records because they're multifaceted. Same thing with Rihanna too, very, very multifaceted. And so you have to be able to get into different sounds. Lil Uzi's another one very multifaceted. And so if you cannot, you know, switch flow, switch genre, switch content, or switch song topic, then you're really not that talented. This is probably not, you know, what you need to be doing with your time. Again, I wonder if the label is going to put any more money behind JT, because right now it looks like most of her budget 
is being spent on clothes. And I think a lot of these clothes are given to her for free or she's, you know, renting them for free. They're loaned out for free. I have a video talking about what I think that's really all about. But you're not going to make it off of fashion. I mean, again, look at Cardi B, known for the fashions, known for the visuals, but not known for her musical talent or legit music success and thus she hasn't released an album in years so when it comes to again bops and, and press and promo and label push and and all of that and likability politics and public opinion glorilla is winning and i do think glorilla is going to be here like she has she's going to continue to be here you know longer than i planned or longer than i you know you know foresaw for her and i think if jt doesn't figure out something fast and doesn't have the budget to do so then this was her beginning and her end again let's talk in the comments i'm gonna talk to y'all in the next one bye